Good afternoon. So today we're looking at Newton's second law of motion, which is simply force equals mass times acceleration. So units of force, we've covered that. The basic unit of force is the Newton, which is also one kilogram meter per second squared. I gave you one conversion factor for kilograms to pounds. Now from pounds to newtons, one pound equals 4.45 newtons. Let's look at the problem. Mo, Larry, and Curly push on a 752 kilogram boat that floats next to a dock. They each exert an 80.5 Newton force parallel to the dock. So A, what is the acceleration of the boat if they all push in the same direction? Give both direction and magnitude. And B, what are the magnitude and direction of the boat's acceleration if Mo pushes in the opposite direction of Larry and Curly? So let's start with A. What is the acceleration of the boat. So again, force equals mass times acceleration. So acceleration equals force divided by mass. Okay, so we're given mass at 752 kilograms. And we're given a force, it's 80.5 Newtons, but there are three. So we're looking at down here, the first scenario. 80.5 times three is 241.5 Newtons. So I'm gonna put 241.5 Newtons here, sorry, Newtons here, this is force, equals, the mass is 752 kilograms, and we don't know the acceleration, and it's going in the x direction, so we're going to put A sub x. So what do you do? You simply divide 241.5 by 752. And your acceleration then becomes 0 0.321 meters per second squared. So the question is, what is the acceleration of the boat if they all push it in the same direction? Then it says give both direction and magnitude. Well, the magnitude of the acceleration you just solved, but the magnitude is the value. So the magnitude is actually 0.321 meters per second squared. Now the direction is going to be the sign of the acceleration and in this case it's positive. So your direction is in the positive x direction. that's moving towards the right. Okay, so now the second part of the problem. B, what are the magnitude and direction of the boat's acceleration if Mo pushes in the opposite direction of Larry and Curly. 
Okay, so as we look at the second image at the bottom, see Mo, he has a big M on his back and he's pushing rightward and Larry and Curly are pushing a situation where 80.5 Newtons is pushing right, so that's positive. But then Mo and Larry, I'm sorry, Larry and Curly, they're going to be negative because they're pushing left. So what does that equal? That equals negative 80.5 Newtons. So now, using the same process that we used before, force 80.5 Newtons divided by mass, which is 752 kilograms, will give you your acceleration, which is negative 0 0.107 meters per second squared. So, what are the magnitude and direction of the boat's acceleration? In this case, the magnitude is negative 0 0.107 meters per second squared. Is that correct? That to you only want the value sign is simply to tell you the direction. And since it's negative here, then the direction of the boat overall will be in the negative x direction. And that makes sense because there are two of them pushing in the negative x direction, so their force is going to overcome Mo's force. Next question. A bartender slides a mug of beer with a mass of 0 0.50 kilograms across the bar. The initial velocity when pushed is 2.3 meters per second. It slows down due to frictional forces and it's going to eventually come to rest, but before it does, it's going to slide one meter before it stops. What are the magnitude and direction of the frictional force? So you're going to have to use the equation of motion for constant acceleration. V sub x squared, or the final velocity, equals the initial velocity in the x direction squared, plus 2ax times the change in displacement. So what you're going to do is just plug in what you know. Your final velocity, well, you know that's going to be zero because it's going to come to a point where it stops. Your initial velocity is 2.3 meters per second, and we're going to square that, plus 2 times a sub x, because we don't know the acceleration yet, and then the displacement well, it slid one meter before it came to rest. So that's one. So two times one is going to be two. So 2.3 squared is 5.3. So I'm going to subtract that from both sides. Now I have negative 5.3 equals 2 times acceleration in the x direction. 
So then now I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get acceleration alone. And then my acceleration in the x direction will be negative 2.6 meters per second squared. So the negative sign means that it's slowing down. Okay, and that makes sense because the bug is going to slow down and eventually come to a stop. So the magnitude of acceleration is simply the value 2.6 meters per second squared. And the direction, well, it's negative, which in this case doesn't mean in which way is it going. It's, it just basically means that it's slowing down. So if it's slowing down, it's going in the opposite direction of the mug. So the frictional forces, the direction of the frictional force is a parallel force opposite to the direction of the acceleration. So that makes sense. And I am going to Da, 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 da. Okay, and clear the screen. We need to go back and see that. Just go back and look at it all and then pause the video. But I want to make sure this is cleared off before the slide continues. There we go. And here are your answers at the bottom. Now let's look at Newton's third law. So Newton's first law, an object at rest remains at rest unless an external force is applied. An object in motion remains in motion unless an external force is applied. Newton's second law basically says force is a product of an object's mass and its acceleration. And the acceleration is directly proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. Now we're at Newton's third law, which basically say, states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So we're going to look at action-reaction pairs. So the motion of an action-reaction pair usually has to have two or more objects for an action and a reaction to take place. So for instance, as a hammer hits the nail, the nail pushes back on the hammer. A bat and a ball, your foot, a soccer ball when you kick it, the ball hits your foot, your foot kicks the ball, the earth and the moon system are other examples are of interacting objects. An interaction is the mutual influence of two objects on each other. So this is this arrow here represents the force of object B on object A. If you turn it around, well, object A is also applying a force to object B in this direction. It's an action-reaction pair. And those forces exist as a pair or they don't exist at all. This slide has a video tutor demo for you to watch, weighing a hovering magnet. Watch that video and then please return to the presentation. In order for you to walk, the floor has to have friction so that your foot sticks to the floor as you straighten your leg, moving your body forward. Okay, the person pushes backwards against the surface 
and the surface pushes forward on the person. That's an action reaction pair. The tire on the road, the road on the tire. Action reaction pair. So the friction that keeps you from slipping is that static friction. The static friction has to point in the forward direction to prevent your foot from slipping. Rockets, thrust. We talked about thrust when a rocket expels gas molecules and pushes it forward or upward in a fast manner. But when a rocket pushes hot gases out of the back, you get a forward thrust and that's an action reaction pair. That's an example of an action reaction pair as well. Okay, here's another problem. A group of canoeists meet in the middle of the lake. After they finish their visit, a person in canoe one pushes on canoe two with a force of 46 newtons. Now let's stop right there. The person in canoe one, when they push on canoe two, they're gonna move backwards, okay? They pushed on canoe one, and that reaction force is gonna push them backwards. So the force on canoe one is going to be negative, all right? So let's just write that down. Let's write force one equals negative 46 Newtons. So force two, it's equal and opposite, but in this case, it's just positive 46 newtons. All right, the mass of canoe one and its occupants is 150 kilograms. So M sub one is 150 kilograms. The mass of canoe two and its occupants is 250 kilograms. So A, find the acceleration for both canoes. So let's find the acceleration. Remember, acceleration equals force divided by mass. So we have acceleration one, and then we have acceleration two. So the force one, negative 46 Newtons, divided by mass one, which is 150 kilograms. Then we have force two, which is positive 46 Newtons, divided by mass two, which is 250 kilograms. Take a minute and calculate that. Okay, so for acceleration one, you should have received a value of zero, negative zero, 0.31 meters per second squared. For A sub two, you should have received 0 0.18 meters per second squared. Okay, now you have your accelerations. The next question, B, says, what is the separation distance after 1.2 seconds of being pushed? So I'm going to write these accelerations over here to the side. Acceleration 1, negative 0 0.31 meters per second squared. Acceleration 2 equals 0 0.18 meters per second squared. 
and then I'm going to raise So in order to find the separation distance after 1.2 seconds of being pushed, we have to use a kinematic equation or an equation of motion. So we want to find the separation distance. So we have two accelerations, all right? We have one time. So we're going to solve this for x of 1, and then we're going to solve it for x of 2. I'll solve it for x of 1, and then you use the same process to solve for x of 2. So for x of 1, x naught. x naught, well, that's the initial place starting from rest, right? So that goes to zero. So we're not going to use that term at all. Okay, V naught X. Well, if it's starting from rest, then the initial velocity is zero. And zero times T, that whole term goes to zero. Oh yeah, this is becoming easy, awesome. So now all you have is one half A sub X T squared. So you have one half a sub one, which is negative 0 0.31 times 1.2, because that is the time, I'm going to square it. Okay, and that equals negative 0 point two two what will my unit what units be? It's asking for the distance. So it's going to be in meters. Okay. Now for the second one, you set up everything the same way. What will I put in the parentheses for acceleration two? Very good, 0 0.18 times 1.2 squared. I know I told you I'd let you solve it, but then I'd have to sit here in silence. And that's 0 0.13 meters. Now, remember, when you're finding delta x, because it asks for the separation distance. So delta x is your final minus your initial. So x of 2 is your final minus your initial and that equals 0 0.35 meters. That is your separation distance after 1.2 seconds of being pushed.